Welcome to several examples on how to express a given interval using inequality notation, a graph, as well as interval notation. For the first two examples, we're given the interval using inequality notation, and then we're asked to graph the interval, as well as write the interval using interval notation. So in the first example, we have x is less than negative 5, or x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So let's first graph x is less than negative 5, Notice negative 5 is not in this interval, and therefore we make an open point on negative 5. And then because it's x is less than negative 5, we graph an arrow to the left. These are all the values on the number line that are less than negative 5. And then we have or x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So because of the equal part of the inequality symbol, notice negative 1 is in the interval. So we make a closed point on negative 1, and then because the inequality symbol is greater than or equal to negative 1, we graph an arrow to the right. Before we express the interval using interval notation, it's important to recognize as we move left on the number line, we approach a negative infinity. As we move right, we approach positive infinity. This is helpful to write the interval using interval notation. Using interval notation, the interval on the left would be the interval from negative infinity to negative 5. We call this an open interval because neither endpoint is included, and therefore we use a random parenthesis to the left of negative infinity and to the right of negative 5. We always use a random parenthesis to the left of negative infinity as well as to the right of infinity. And then for the word or, for interval notation, we use u for union, and then the interval on the right is from negative 1 to infinity, but because the interval includes negative 1, we say it's closed on negative 1, and therefore we use a square bracket to the left of negative 1, and then to the right of infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis. Looking at the next example, we have the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to positive 2, Remember, absolute value is a number's distance from zero, and therefore the graph of this interval is the graph of all the numbers on the number line that have a distance from zero that's greater than or equal to positive two. We can also express this interval as x is greater than or equal to positive two, or x is less than or equal to negative two. Notice for the first inequality, we just drop the absolute value but for the second inequality, we drop the absolute value, reverse the inequality symbol, as well as change the sign of the value on the right. So to graph this interval, let's first graph x is greater than or equal to positive 2. Because 2 is in the interval, we make a closed point on positive 2. And because the inequality symbol is greater than or equal to positive 2, we graph an arrow to the right. And we'd be approaching positive infinity. And then we have or x is less than or equal to negative 2. So we have a closed point on negative 2, arrow to the left. As we move left, we approach negative infinity. And notice how we've just graphed all the numbers on the number line that have a distance from 0 that is greater than or equal to 2 units. And now to express the interval using interval notation, the interval on the left would be the interval from negative infinity to negative 2. The interval includes negative 2, so we have a square bracket to the right of negative 2, run a parenthesis to the left of negative infinity, and then union, the interval from 2 to infinity. Again, the interval includes the endpoint of 2, so we say the interval is closed on 2, run a parenthesis to the right of infinity. For the next two examples, we're given the interval using interval notation. So let's go ahead and graph this interval here, where we have the interval from negative infinity to negative 6. The interval is closed on negative 6, so it includes negative 6. Union, the interval from negative 4 to infinity, and the interval includes the endpoint of negative 4, or we say the interval is closed on negative 4. And remember, to the left, we approach negative infinity, to the right, we approach infinity. So the interval from negative infinity to negative 6 closed on negative 6 would have a closed point on negative 6, arrow to the left. 
the interval from negative four to infinity would have a closed point on negative four arrow to the right. And now we'll express the interval using inequality notation. The interval on the left would be x is less than or equal to negative six. And then we have or. The interval on the right would be x greater than or equal to negative four. For the next example, none of the endpoints are included, so we say we have the open interval from negative infinity to four union the open interval from four to infinity. Notice how this would be all the numbers on the number line except four. Graphing them individually, the open interval from negative infinity to four would have an open point on positive four, arrow to the left, approaching negative infinity, union the open interval from four to infinity would also have an open point on positive four arrow to the right approaching positive infinity. So again we've graphed all the numbers on the number line except x equals four. And now we'll express the interval using inequalities. The interval on the left would be x less than four and then we'd have or the interval on the right would be x greater than four. And now we'll look at two more examples on the next slide. For the last two examples, notice how we're given the graph and asked to express the interval using inequality notation as well as interval notation. So for the inequality notation, for the interval on the left, because we have an open point on negative one, we have x is less than negative one, or the interval on the right, because the point is closed on zero, would be x is greater than or equal to zero. And then for the interval notation, we know to the left we approach negative infinity, to the right we approach infinity. So the interval on the left would be from negative infinity to negative one, does not include either endpoint, so we have an open interval. So we have a parenthesis to the left of infinity and to the right of negative one, union, the interval from zero to infinity, the interval includes zero, but the interval is closed on zero, so we have a square bracket to the left of zero and a parenthesis to the right of infinity. And finally, for our last example, focusing on the interval on the left first, notice how we have an open point on negative two, arrow to the left, which means x is less than negative two, or notice for the next interval, we have two open endpoints, and the graph contains all the values between negative one and positive one. So x is greater than negative one and less than one. We can express this compound inequality as x is greater than negative one and x is less than one. Notice how this would be all the values between negative one and positive one, not including the endpoints. And then following for interval notation, to the left, we approach negative infinity. So for the interval on the left, we have the interval from negative infinity, comma, to negative two. Neither endpoint is included. So we have a parenthesis to the left of negative infinity and to the right of negative two. Union, the next interval is from negative one to one, and neither endpoint is included. So again, we use a parenthesis to the left of negative one and to the right of positive one. I hope you found this helpful.